My name is Yadis Atulusa. I've been working on developing various videos uh, for you, YouTube on education training methods, research methods, sustaining skills using different languages such as English, uh, Amharic, and Nepal Romo. Uh, here we have prepared uh, an educational video on adult learning and its principles. Uh, of course, I've categorized uh, the content into two. Uh, that means uh, I've uploaded two videos uh, that are presented on this uh, subject matter. So you are invited to watch uh, both videos uh, so as to get full play knowledge on adult learning. This one is the second video or the last video. So I'd like you to refer to the first video because this one is a continuation of that. Now uh, let me move or go to presenting. Now we move to characteristics of adult learners. According to Malcolm Knowles and others, the following six major assumptions characterize adult as learner. Malcolm Knowles is one of the gurus known in adult education. He has coined specifically these six major character, uh, characteristics of adults. So he's a known uh, adult educator. So according to him, there are about six, six assumptions that are characterized adults as learners. The first one is adults have a need to know why they should learn something. Mind you, these six characteristics are very important in order to plan learning for adults. Well, the second one is adults have a deep need to be self-directing. The third one is characteristics of adult is adults have a great volume and different quality of experience than use. The fourth characteristics of adult learners is adults become ready to learn when they experience in their life a need to know or a need to be performed more effectively and satisfyingly. The fifth one is adults enter into a learning experience with a task-centered orientation to learning. And the sixth one is adults are motivated to learn by both extrinsic and intrinsic motivators. Now, we are going to see the details of all these six characteristics of adult learning. We are also going to see how we take into consideration these characteristics during planning and implementing adult learning programs. Now, the first characteristic of adult learning is adults have a need to know why they should learn something. What does this mean? This means adults are motivated to learn when they are convinced that learning, the new knowledge, attitude, or skills is important. Learning is a more meaningful experience for adults if they can understand why they need to know. And also learning has to be applicable to their work or other responsibility to be of value to them. Therefore, based on these characteristics of adult learning, or char characteristics of adult learning, number one, what should you do a facilitator or educator in order to plan and facilitate plan or implement adult education for adults. First, facilitators must identify objectives for adult participants before training begins. Second, this means it is also that the theories and the concepts must be related to setting familiar to participants. This need can be fulfilled by letting participants choose projects that reflect their own interest. Because, because remember that the first, the first characteristic of adult learning is read as adults have a need to know why they should learn something, yeah? a need to know. Therefore, they have to know what they're going to learn. That means, as a facilitator or adult educator, we have to plan together based on what they need to know, based on their needs. Great. The second characteristic of adults is read as adults have a deep need to be self-directed. So, in order, what does this mean? Let us define it. What does adults have a deep need to be self-directing? What does it mean? That means, uh, say, the psychologists uh, uh, define or they give definition of an adult um, as one who has achieved the self-concept of being in charge of his or her own life or being responsible for making his or her own decisions and living with the consequences. So adults have a strong need to take responsibility for their own lives, including deciding what they want to learn. Uh, according to Knowles, the, the, the guru of the adult edu education, 
according to him or what he speculates that is something what he speculates that is when adult learners are treated as children they withdraw from the learning situations even they may not stay there they might be offended unless otherwise we respect them unless otherwise we teach them what they don't want so first we have to understand a deep need to that uh, what they want or uh, we have to know that they want to direct themselves we should not tell them do this don't do this in black and white of course we can do it systematically we can't order them or uh, manage them in the way we do the children's therefore facilitator must actively involve adult participants in the learning process and serve the facilitators for them However, self-directed learning does not necessarily mean learning without help. Hence, adults often need help in making the transition from seeing themselves as dependent learners to become self-directed learners. Now, let us move to the certain characteristics of adult adults. Adults have a great volume of, and volume and different quality of experience than use. What does this mean? That means the longer we live, in the, the more experience we have. That is what it shows. This affected learning in several ways. In several ways. Adults bring to the learning experience a wealth or experience which can be used to enrich their learning and that of other participants. Adults have a broader base of experience to which to attach new ideas and skills and give them richer meaning. Therefore, trying learning activities to past experiences can make them more meaningful and will help participants remember them better. Adult learners come together in group having a say ha having had a wide range of experiences. They will have a wide range of differences in background, in their interests, and also uh, they might have a wide range of differences in their abilities and learning styles. Because of these differences, adult learning must be more individual and more varied. The fourth uh, characteristic of adult is that adults become ready to learn when they experience in their life. I need to know or I need to be to perform more effectively and satisfyingly. What does this mean? This means adults learn best when they choose voluntarily to make a commitment to learn. So in order for them to choose voluntarily, the trainer or the facilitator needs to help them understand why the information is included or why they need to develop a particular skill. They usually know what goal they want to attain. They therefore appreciate an educational program that is organized and has clearly defined elements. Therefore, facilitators must show participants how the training helped them attain their goals. When we come to the fifth characters to adult learner, it is adults enter into a learning experience with a task center orientation to learning. What does this mean? Children learn through a process of acquiring subject matter needed to pass tests through the content of courses for children needs to be organized into subject matter courses divided into specific periods of time. In adult education, the content needs to be organized around life tasks, problems, or situations. The content should be focused much more on how to and problem solving. Now we are in the fifth one. I mean the sixth one. The sixth one is adults are motivated to learn by both extrinsic and intrinsic motivators. What does this mean? This means adults learners respond to extrinsic motivators such as wage, increases, promotion, or praise for their goals. But they also respond to intrinsic motivators such as the need for self-esteem, broadened responsibilities, power, and achievement. In fact, the children also have both motivation, but the children have more extrinsic motivation. That means it is their parents most of the time that motivate them. In fact, when they grow up, as they grow up, they begin to motivate by themselves. That means the motivation, intrinsic means motivation from in, inner, inner motivation. Motivation is um, one should be motivated in order to be successful from the inner part, from the inner, by the way. He or she himself or herself should be motivated. 
So adults are both motivational factors. They need to be shown respect. In fact, the children also want to be shown respect, but the adults need it more. Facilitators must acknowledge the wealth of experiences that adult participants bring on the training program. These adults should be treated as equals in experience and knowledge and allowed to voice their opinions freely in class. Now we move to comparing pedagogy and anthropology. What does pedagogy mean or how do we define pedagogy? What does pedagogy implicate? What is needed from the facilitator or the teachers in order to implement learning in the case of pedagogy or for adults? That is in the left side. For we see in the right hand column what should be done for in the case of andragogy. Okay. Now we are going to compare pedagogy and andragogy. Pedagogy is learning for children. Andragogy is learning for adults. So in the left hand side, the, what is put there are the parameters for pedagogy. What to be done, how to teach them, uh, what the characteristics uh, the, uh, learners look like. So in the right hand side, we will see what, uh, what the pedagogy implicates in the pedagogy, what the learning teaching look, should look like, how the learners or adults behave, so what we should do, something like that. So we compare the, from the pedagogic perspective and from the andragogy perspective as well. For instance, now in pedagogy, it is subject centered, the so course center, centered. The curriculum is course centered. In andragogy, it is problem centered. In the pedagogy, learning is mandatory. Children should learn, yeah, that's mandatory. Children should, children should learn what the schools teach them. But in case of andragogy, it is voluntarily. Of course, voluntarily we say, adults should know the reason why they learn, adults should be motivated, adults should, 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 should need a deep need in order to learn, and also the learning take place on the, based on the willingness of them. Regarding attendance, in pedagogy there is uh, concrete, tangible attendance. Students should come to school regularly, but in case of uh, uh, andra I mean, uh, andra andragogy in adult learning, maybe it is flexible. Learners are dependent in the case of pedagogy for children learning, in case of adult learning, independent. That's what it shows. Now, it continues. Uh, in pedagogy, inexperienced learners, their children, in andragogy, experienced learners will be there. In pedagogy, teacher prescribed content. But in andragogy, it is the adult that prescribed content, it is the learner. That does not mean that the learner totally prescribed, being with the facilitators, being with the adult educators, adult education partners, of course, for that matter. Pedagogy, when you say learning for the future, <laughs> learning for the future, we invest on the children for the future. That means we invest on the future. But in the case of andragogy, we invest on the now, on the immediate, so that they learn something, they know something, and so that they make use of it. Another is learners subordinate to teachers. But in case of andragogy, learners equal to the teachers. <laughs> in the case of pedagogy, because they are children, it is the teachers that control them. It is the teachers that control them. But in case of andragogy, there should be a kind of friendliness. That means almost they are equal uh, in age, in experience, something like that. The only thing is the facilitator might might be better uh, educated, maybe, better educated or facilitators actually. But that don't mean the, in andragogy, all the facilitators are better in, in knowledge and skill than the andragogy, than, than the, the adult, it does not mean. In some cases, there are some adults who are, uh, who have uh, knowledge and experience and skill than the facilitators do, that should be put into our minds as a facilitator, adult learning facilitator, we should not see ourselves as we are superior. Never at all. That that should should be should not be uh, done that way. Uh, now we still we are comparing pedagogy and andragogy. There are parameters there uh, for uh, parameters. For instance, the concept of the learner. When you see in pedagogy, trainees are fully uh, dependent on the trainer. By the way, rather than calling trainees students, that's better in the case of pedagogy. But in case of andragogy, the, we can call trains 
uh, training or learners whatsoever, trainers or uh, facilitators, depending on the situation. Okay, we call it the role of the learner's experience. In pedagogy, uh, the learners have little experience, but in case of andragogy, they have high experience. And also, regarding the learner's readiness, uh, in pedagogy, trainers learn what and when they are told to learn. Yeah, that means they are directed by the teachers. But in case of andragogy, participants only learn when they experience the need to know or do something. Their readiness to learn is often together by a change in the situation. So all these are based on the characteristics of adults and the principles of adult learning. Therefore, these two things are very important. The knowing the principles of adult learning and also knowing the characteristics of adults that are very important in order to plan uh, and also in order to facilitate adult learning programs. Still, we, co we compare pedagogy and pedagogy based on the adult learning principles and also characteristics of adult learners. That is, these are what is derived from that. So the one who understands the principles of adult learning and also characteristics of adult learners can understand this comparison uh, clearly. The learners' uh, orientation on learning, when you see pedagogy trainees are subject centers, by the way, this is a kind of uh, repetition, actually. Well, the learners are motivated to learn. Yeah, trainees are motivated to learn by external. But in case of andragogy, as we have already said, from the both external and inter internal as well. So still, it's comparing, for instance, uh, uh, children and learning adults, or classroom, we call children classroom, regular classroom. Now, in case of classroom learning or children learning, learners are for all instruction, passive reception, receive information, literacy. Of course, this is relatively, by the way. Dears, thank you very much for your staying with me. I hope that you enjoyed by watching both videos. And uh, I would like to, to say thank you for uh, your staying with me by watching these videos and also your participation. We will meet in another videos that I'm going to present for you, specifically on education and training. Till then, Bye-bye.